Pretty little kitty from the capital city. Everybody calls her Maisie Mac. A kilt, a jumper, that's her style. Granny and Daddy love her cheeky smile. If you want adventure, she's the friend for you. Full of mischief, funny too. Furry, purry, a cute wee cat. The kitty from the city. Maisie Mac. Maisie Mackenzie was going on holiday to Paris. And we're there yet, Granny? No, dear, we've only just taken off. Granny's next-door neighbour, Mrs McKitty, and her niece, Lydia McSporran, were tagging along, too. Why don't you sit quietly like Lydia? <laughs> She's learning French. Pardon vous Francais. Parlez vous to you, too. And my name's Maisie Mack, not Francie. <laughs> Here we are, the Hotel Splendide. Maisie Mack thought that the Hotel Splendide was very splendid indeed, especially the lift. Going up. <laughs> as soon as Maisie Mack had unpacked, she wanted to have adventures and explore. But Mrs. McKitty and Lydia had other ideas. Well, uh, what do you think? Uh, well, it, it isn't my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Well, how about this one? Well, none of us will need umbrellas if it rains. Don't be so rude. Auntie Marjorie looks très chic. Oh, the Eiffel Tower. How perfect. Yes, it's certainly an Eiffel. I'll take it. What's the matter, Maisie Mac? You've got a face like a wet Saturday. I'm bored. Can we explore now? No, no, there's no time for that. Lydia wants to go to the Louvre. Couldn't she have gone before we left the hotel? The Louvre is a museum full of wonderful statues and paintings. Like the moggy Lisa. No one knows what she's smiling about. Oh, well, me neither. Her frock's a horrible colour. I'd like her better if she was wearing a nice bright red one. You are a very silly kitten. I'm not. Maisie Mac didn't like statues. They just stood there and didn't do anything. Hmm. Huh. I wouldn't give it house room. I can't abide cracked ornaments. <sighs> I'm tired. My paws ache and I'm hungry. Yes, I'm, I'm rather peckish myself. Let's get something to eat. When the waiter came, Lydia ordered everyone's lunch in French. Mmm, yum, yum. Oh, oh, there are snails in my dinner. The snails are your oh. dinner, silly. Oh. That night, Maisie Mac went to bed hungry and had a bad dream. No, no, go away. Leave me alone. Oh, do not be alarmed. You just had a bad dream, no? My name is Alphonse Moose. Luckily for Mr. Moose, Maisie Mac was a well-brought-up kitten who only chased mice for fun. My name's Maisie Mackenzie and I'm from Edinburgh. Pleased to meet you. So, Maisie Mac, you are on holiday? <laughs> Paris is wonderful, is it not? No, it's awful. But that's impossible. Everybody loves Paris. I hate it, especially the food. What? French cooking is the greatest in the world. No, it's not. Oh, oh but yes, it is. He looked so funny <laughs> that Maisie Mac just had to laugh. <laughs> Lydia was trying to ignore all the noise coming from Maisie Mac's room, but it wasn't easy. That Maisie Mac really is the limit. Deary me, are you all right? All is well, thank you. Let's shake paws and be friends. Sorry I was so rude. 
When Maisie Mack explained what a horrible day she'd had, Alphonse understood right away. And I did so want to have some adventures. Is it not an adventure to meet me, the most famous mouse in all of France? What you need is some fun and some fantastic French food. Et voilà, the moose family. This really is the last straw. Lydia was so shocked, she ran straight to her auntie's room. Oh, Auntie Marjorie, can I sleep in your bed tonight? A big girl like you. Please, don't let the mice in the wee vans get me. Oh. Alphonse introduced his three brothers, who brought Maisie Mac dish after dish of lovely food. I hope you're hungry, Maisie Mac. Oh, yes, I'm starving. To begin with, shrimp soup. To follow, fish with French fries. Oh, and finally, the pièce de résistance, uh, ice cream and hot chocolate. Mmm. While Maisie Mac tucked into her supper, Alphonse played his accordion. And his three sisters danced the can-can. Oh, oh, bravo! The talented Moose family made Maisie Mac happy and chased away all her grumbles. And now, time for little pussy cats to go to sleep. Au revoir, Mamzelle, Maisie Mac. Uh, au revoir, Monsieur. In the morning, Maisie Mac wondered if it had all been a dream. But then she saw a wee book on her bedside oh, table. A guide to Paris by Alphonse Mousse. It was full of suggestions of things to do on Maisie Mac's last day in Paris. She wondered if she could persuade Mrs. McKitty mm. to change her plans. We're going to spend the day quietly in our room, aren't we, Lydia? Is Lydia all right? She kept me awake half the night. She had a nightmare. Insisted that mice were driving about the corridors and wee vans. <laughs> I blame it on all those snails she ate last night. I told her not to have a second helping. You and Maisie Mac will just have to manage without us, I'm afraid. What shall we do, Maisie Mac? Let's explore and have adventures. Maisie, Mac and Granny managed to have a grand time. They did all the things that Alphonse recommended in his book. They took a ride on the Metro. They went up the Eiffel Tower. Going up. It was thrilling to look down and see the whole of Paris below. And finally in the evening, Maisie, Mac and Granny had dinner on a boat on the river. Bon appétit, Granny. Stick in till you stick out, Macy Mac. <laughs> Next day, it was time to go home, and Macy Mac was sorry to leave. She had loved her holiday in Paris. Thanks to Mr. Moose. Olive oil, Macy Mac. Olive oil, Monsieur Moose. That's French for Tootaloo the New. That's her style, Granny and Daddy. Love her cheeky smile. If you want adventure, she's the friend for you. Full of mischief, funny too. Furry, purry, a cute wee cat. The kitty from the city. Maisie Mac. Maisie Mackenzie was on holiday from school. She had been playing football on the back green when it had started to rain. And so she came inside to play. And Dalgleish passes to Mackenzie, 
Mackenzie shoots. Maisie Mackenzie, you're making more noise than the Edinburgh tattoo. What have I told you about playing football indoors? Sorry, Granny. Why can't it be sunny when I'm on holiday and rain when I'm at school? <laughs> Never mind, pet. I've got a surprise for you. Maisie Mack had been sent a parcel from her daddy, who was in Egypt, helping to dig for treasure. Oh, great, a bucket and spade. I can make sandcastles. Oh, but it's too rainy to go to the beach. Your daddy sent a letter, too. He asks if you'd like to visit him. Oh, yes, please. Do they have sand in Egypt, Granny? Oh, 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 you could want, my dear. In Egypt, Daddy was trying to solve an ancient puzzle. There must be a way into the pyramid, but I haven't a clue where it is. Can I see the drawings again, please? No. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy showed Maisie Mac the pyramid of Nefrakiti, who was queen of Egypt long, long ago. Where's the front door? Well, we know there must be a way in somewhere, but the builders hid it, because the pyramid is filled with the queen Nefrakiti's treasure. Well, we don't want to get under your daddy's paws. We should let him get back to work. Let's go and see some of the sights. Tootaloo the new daddy. Granny took Maisie Mac for a ride on the River Nile, the biggest river in Egypt. Oh, I'm thirsty, Granny. I, I could do with wetting my whistle myself. No, dear, you can't drink the water. It isn't clean enough for cats to drink. What do you say to us taking a ride on the ship of the desert next? Oh, Granny, we've just got off one boat. I want to make sand castles. <laughs> a ship of the desert is what they call camels in Egypt. Hello, uh, we'd like to hire a camel to ride. One hump or two. Uh, one will be fine, thank you. Take your pick. Hello, I'm Maisie Mackenzie from Edinburgh. Assalam alaikum. I am Abdul from Aswan. See <laughs> that tickles. I think Abdul likes you. How am I going too fast for you? No, this is smashing. <laughs> Isn't it, Granny? Mm, quite. No, I prefer the buses at home. The, the seats aren't so lumpy. Your Granny, oh. she flies like the wind. Oh, the last time she moved that fast was at the January sales. This very famous statue is called the Sphinx. It was carved thousands of years ago and shows the face of Queen Nefrakiti. <laughs> Come on, Granny, let's have a look at the market. Oh, I'm puffed out. Let's have a nice cup of tea and take the weight off our paws for a while. Can I go and look at the market on my own, please? All right then, pet, but you stay where I can see you. Don't go too far. Don't worry, Granny. I'll be careful. So Maisie Mac, being an adventurous kitten, went to investigate the busy marketplace. Most of us carpets. Most of us carpets. Everyone must have a carpet. For you, only one million piastres. Oh, it is funny, but I can't afford it. Oh, a parade, I love parades. Maisie Mac went to see the procession, but when she got there, she was too little to see over everyone's head. Oh, I can't see anything, it's not fair. I know, but Maisie Mac still couldn't see the procession. So she climbed higher and higher 
Before she realized it, Maisie Mac had climbed to the top of the pyramid. Great! I can see everything from up here. Oh! Without meaning to, Maisie Mac had stumbled onto the secret entrance to the pyramid. Oh, that was fun! Inside the pyramid, Maisie Mac found lots of mummies. All these mummies were well, there no daddies long ago in Egypt. And these must be the high hoglyphics that daddy mentioned. They look like an old comet. I'd like a fish supper myself. Oh! Oh! Home wrecker! Granny will be wondering where I am. I must be lost. I can't see an exit sign anywhere. Abdul, what are you doing here? Oh, it's only a funny old statue. Oh, dearie me, I think I've broken it. Oh, I wish I'd brought my sunglasses. Queen Nefrakiti, flee, flee! Come back! I haven't got fleas. I wonder if the Amisi Mac has got fleas. He never did he walks again! Help! <laughs> That's no queen. <laughs> no, it's my wee princess, Maisie Mac. Later, Maisie Mac watched as all the treasure was taken to the local museum for safekeeping. <laughs> Did they really think you were the Queen of Egypt, Maisie Mac? Aye, until Granny helped explain what had happened. Fancy my wee daddy scone finding the secret entrance to the pyramid. <laughs> I'm the proudest daddy in the world. Soon it was time to go home, and Maisie Mac had to say her goodbyes. Farewell, little one. May your whiskers never scorch in the sun. Toodle-doo the doo. That's her style, Granny and Daddy. Love her cheeky smile. If you want adventure, she's the friend for you. Full of mischief, funny too. Furry, purry, a cute wee cat. The kitty from the city. Maisie Mac. Maisie Mackenzie was mad about ballet. She wanted to be a ballerina when she grew up, just like her favorite dancer, Darcy Bendover. Hello, Maisie Mac. Oh. Wow, are you practicing a flying tackle? <laughs> no, it's what ballerinas call a grand jeté. Maisie Mac, have you finished packing yet? Almost. Well, get your skates on, the taxi will be here soon. Maisie Mac was going to Moscow with the Scottish Cats Ballet. The Cats Ballet were going to perform Swan Lake at the Push-Off Theatre, home of the world-famous Push-Off Ballet Company. Maisie Mac had been looking forward to it for weeks. Maisie Mac's granny, her friend Archie, and granny's neighbour, Mrs McKitty, all went to see her off. Dear me, I hope they haven't left without Maisie Mac. There they are. Hello, Mrs. McChoo-Choo, I'm here. Hello, Maisie Mac. Put your suitcase with the others. It's almost time to board the plane. Maisie Mac's friends were there. Maureen and Doreen, the Purr de Twins. 
Hello, Missy Hello, Mac. Hello, Missy Mac. We can't, we can't wait. wait. Can you? No, I can't. I just know it's going to be tickety-boo. Oh, look. Oh, we're going to get our pictures in the papers. Out of the way, you peasants. Over here, Tommy. Uh, look this way, Morag. Squad, show us what you can do. Tommy and Morag McTwirl were the Cat's Ballet's leading dancers. Trust the McTwirls to show off. They're a right pair. But Tommy and Morag are really good dancers. Yes, and they think they're the bee's knees. Come on, everybody, it's time to board the plane. Hurry along now. Cheerio. Tootaloo the new. Tootaloo. Ha, I'll miss you. Just imagine, Marjorie. My wee lab's got to be in Swan Lake. Hm. With Maisie Mac on stage, you could end up looking more like a duck pond. The plane ride to Moscow was long and tiring. Maisie Mac was looking forward to a nap when she got to the hotel. Until she saw her hotel room, that is. James, I don't believe it. Is this really our room? Ah, it is. Mrs. McTutu said so. Ho oh, ho, yippee! Well, you three seem very bouncy today. Would you like to go sightseeing? Yes, please, Mrs. McTutu. Mrs. McTutu had been to Moscow before, and she showed the Cat's Valley all around the city. Last stop on her tour was St. Basil's Cathedral. Smile, everyone. Just a minute. Tommy and I should be at the front. Isn't that so, Tommy? Abs a bloomin' lootly, Morag. Hey, watch yourself. Who are you pushing? Stop that. What are you doing? I've had enough of those two bumbleheads. Who threw that? You can't do that to me. Says who? Oh, a snowball fight. Stand still, dear. I'm trying to take a picture. Thanks to Maisie Mac, Mrs. McTutu's photos were livelier than she intended. That night, Maisie Mac wrote a postcard home to her granny. I'm having a lovely time. Our hotel is very swanky. We had a snowball fight and went to bed early because tomorrow we start rehearsals with the push-off ballet. Yet! Why am I, Sergei Jumpov, the greatest dancer in Russia, wasting my time with a bunch of no-goodniks? Try to dance like swans, not crazy chickens. Don't think he likes us very much. He told me I danced like a haggis with wellies on. We try again, yes? Like so. I do not ask you to dance like jump off. Nobody can. But you are dancing like kittens who are eating too much of the mince and tatties. Now take your positions. We will try again. All that day and the next, Maisie Mac danced as well as she knew how. But all Sergei Jumpoff had to say was, Yet! <laughs> Yet! Yet! Mr. Jumpoff keeps telling me off. Don't worry, Maisie Mac. Just do your best and I'm sure everything will be fine. I know what Maisie Mac would be best at. Sweeping the stage after the performance. Last, the night of the big performance arrived. Every ballet fan in Moscow was there. Look, the theater is jam-packed. Don't worry, Ducky. They won't even notice you. They've come to see me dance on me tippy toes. And I'll tell you this for nothing. If you make a mess of things, you'll have Tommy and I to answer to. Thank you so much for coaching the kittens, Mr. Jumper. I'm sure they won't let you down. Mm -hmm. Oh well, here we go. Oh no! What? I don't think 
I can hold on much longer. A ruin. A jump off the reputation is a ruin. Nearly, Mr. Jump Toss, nearly. Not amazing, Mac. I've never seen such a pest in all my puff. Why, you wee stinker. Come on, Morag, let's show these amateurs how it should be done. Oh! Out of my way at once. Do Mrs. McTutu. Keep dancing, Maisie Mac. Keep dancing. Maisie Mac danced like she'd never danced before. It was her dream come true. At the end of the performance, Maisie Mac took her back. Oh, 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 the loop chick. Uh, this is the funniest one Rake I have ever seen. <laughs> Tom Head Morak McTwiddle made a big splash. But it is you who are the star of the show. Das Gidania. That's Russian for Tickle the Doo. Mackenzie was very excited. She was about to meet her pen pal, Noriko. Granny, wake up. Oh. We're nearly in Japan. Oh. Oh. Dear, hush now, you'll oh. wake the whole plane. She already has. Please fasten your seatbelts. And that means you too, Maisie Mac. We will shortly be landing in Tokyo. It didn't take Maisie Mac and Granny long to get through customs. Ah, hey. Oh, what is this, eh? Scottish porridge oats. <laughs> I never travel without them. Missy Mac! Missy Mac! Oh! Missy Mac! It's Noriko! Missy Mac and Noriko had been dying to meet each other, but when they did, they were a bit shy. Hachime Mashite, Missy Mac. I'm Mr. Hatsumi. Noriko's father. My daughter is very excited about you coming to stay. <laughs> Aren't you, Noriko? Hello. Welcome to Japan, Granny-san. Oh, pleased to meet you too, Mr. Hatsumi. Ouch! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Look at the car, Granny. It's as long as the Royal Mile. The streets of Tokyo were bustling. Maisie Mac had never seen so many people in such a hurry to get to so many different places before. Granny, Granny, what's that? It is sumo wrestling. There's a big basho here tomorrow night. A big basho? No, a basho is big tournament. Aren't they, well, just a wee bit fat for sports? Oh, they're meant to be like that. They push each other with their tummies. My brother Kobana's a sumo wrestler. Oh, how will he be in the tournament tomorrow? When Maisie Mac asked about Kobana, Mr. Hatsumi went very quiet. Before long, they reached Noriko's house at the bottom of Mount Fuji. 
Your house is a bobby dazzler, Nari. Aye, it's bonny. Amazing Mac couldn't wait to see inside. You must have totally wee chairs to fit under that table. We sit on the floor, like this. When everyone was sat down, Narika's mummy brought in the lunch. Missy Mac, lunch is ready. Oh, my fish is raw. Is your mummy's oven broken? Oh, it's supposed to be raw. It's sushi. And where are the knives and forks? Use these. Eating with chopsticks was harder than it looked. <gasps> I think the sushi is still alive. Ooh. When Maisie Mac finally got some into her mouth, she found that she liked it. Mmm, yum yum. <laughs> After lunch, Maisie Mac and Noriko went outside for a spot of fresh air. Have hit Kobana. That's my big brother. Oh, he isn't big. He's enormous. He's meant to be in training. Mm, looks a bit peely wally to me. Is he off his food? Yes, unless he puts on some weight soon, he won't be heavy enough to win any fights. Shall we ask him to throw our ball back? No, I'll get it. Mm. So you don't even warm the pot? The rules of the tea ceremony have been passed down through the years. It's a very ancient tradition. Aye, well, it's just the same in Morningside where I come from, but... Oh! Sorry, I was just trying to show Narika how to... I don't care what you were trying to do, young lady. I think the best thing for you is to have a nap. Now off you go. However hard she tried, Maisie Mac couldn't fall asleep. She was too busy thinking about poor Cabana. Missy Mac, are you asleep? No, but I think I've just had a very, very good idea to help Cabana. Listen. I hope you've got a good reason for this, young kitten. Oh, yes, Granny San. Missy Mac said you'd think it was a wonderful idea when she told you. Well, what is it? Come and look at this, Granny. Who's that with a face as long as a wet weekend? Maisie Mac explained about Cabana and how she and Granny might just be able to help the sumo wrestler. And Granny was only too pleased to do her bit. That's porridge, the ancient Scottish tradition. Oh, nothing more Scottish. Right, follow me. If you want to build yourself up, laddie, you could do worse than have some of this. It's Scottish porridge, Cabana, from the land of the falling rain. I don't feel hungry. Now, come on, son. Just a wee spoonful and you'll feel much better. <laughs> Go on, it'll make your whiskers grow. <laughs> That's what you always tell me, isn't it, Granny? This porridge is, how you say, the bee's bees. Stick in till you stick out, Cabana. <laughs> He's got the taste now. <laughs> it's a good thing I made an extra large saucepan of it. Next day, Maisie Mac was woken by a strange noise. What's happening? My brother started practicing his wrestling again. I think the porridge ceremony was a success. Do you think he'll be ready for the tournament? Oh, your tummy's like iron. <laughs> Good luck, Cabana. But Cabana didn't need luck. He had a tummy full of Granny's best porridge. Give him some welly. Bash him with your belly. Give him some welly. Bash him with your belly. Measy Mac, behave. You're not at the football now. But Granny, just one more cat to beat, and he's the champion. Too soon, Maisie Mac and Granny had to say goodbye to their friends in Japan. 
that Mr. Hatsumi had arranged a little surprise for them. Oh, Granny, look! What does that say? I don't know, dear. It's in Japanese. It means... Tutalu the new. It is Scottish for Saganara, yes? Tutalu the new. day of school and Maisie Mackenzie was daydreaming about her daddy. Soon she was going to meet him in Australia. Hello, Maisie Mac. Have we any ideas now? How would you find water in a drought? You could stick a bucket out of the window and collect rain in it. <laughs> there is no rain in a drought. Sometimes you can find water if you dig underground. How would you know where to look? You need a special stick like this. When you're near water, it starts to twitch. How can a wee stick find water? It must be magic. When the school bell rang, Maisie Mac ran like the wind. Australia, here I come! <laughs> Granny and her neighbour, Mrs McKitty, saw Maisie Mac off at the airport. You sure you don't want your umbrella? Yes, Daddy says they haven't had rain for months. Have you got a clean hanky, Maisie Mac? No, but if my nose runs, I can wipe it on my sleeve. Toodaloo the new! I don't know where we went wrong with that, Captain Isabella. When Maisie Mac arrived in Australia, her daddy was already waiting for her. Daddy! <laughs> How's my wee daddy scarf? Tickety-boo! Come on, let's go and explore. Soon, Daddy and Maisie Mac were travelling over the famous Sydney Harbour Bridge on their way north. Slow down, Daddy. I want to take a picture. I'll just get my camera. Wow! What's all this water for? It's our supply for when we cross the outback. What's the outback, Daddy? You're looking at it. Oh, I wouldn't want to break down out here. It's awful hot. Hold on tight, Maisie Mac. Ah! Ah! Quick, Maisie Mac. <laughs> Climb out of the back. Daddy, grab my paw. Uh-oh. Daddy grabbed Maisie Mac's paw just in time, but he was very heavy and she started to slip. No worries, mate. Hi, I'm Carl Skipper from Bouncy Springs. How's it going? I'm Maisie Mackenzie from Edinburgh, and this is my daddy, Professor Mackenzie. Oh, daddy, are you all right? I'm fine, Maisie Mac, but look at her jeep. Blimey, is that how you lot drive in Scotland? Oh, that's all our water gone. I'll sort you out, Prof. 
You can get a bus back to the city at the next town. It's only a short hop away. I'll share my water with you both, OK? Kyle's idea of a short hop it was a long walk for a wee kitten. Another drink, mate? Kyle, we've run out of water. Thought that might happen. Better cross your fingers we find a creek to refill our canteen before night time. Hopefully we'll be all right. What do you mean, hopefully? Kyle took Maisie Mac and Daddy through the bush to a nearby watering hole. Oh, this place is dustier than Granny's attic. Is this because of the drought, Kyle? Oh, too right, Prof. Blimey. Ah, oh, now we're really up the creek. <laughs> Look, it's nothing to laugh about. Oh, no. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> we'll probably all die of thirst. <laughs> Who's that? Ah, oh, that's me mate, Cracker. He's a kookaburra. Oh, he never stops laughing. You get used to it. And this he is, Darlene Dinkum. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Dinkum? What a polite little kitten. Oh, Professor Mackenzie. <laughs> Enchanted, Mrs. Dinkum. You's looking for water, too? We've been looking all day. Might have to forget about it tonight. We can try searching again tomorrow. I reckon we should serve up some bush tucker to our guests. What's bush tucker? Food, Maisie, mate. This place is one big supermarket, and everything's for free. Getting supper ready was much more fun than it was at home. Oh! Maisie Mac jumped up and down in the sand bed of the watering hole, making the yabbies pop up to the surface so Kyle could grab them. Meanwhile, Daddy helped Mrs. Dinkum pick eucalyptus leaves from the trees. In no time at all, supper was ready. For the first course, we have succulent yabbies from the creek. Mm, lovely. Smells delicious. There were lots of strange things to eat, for some stranger than others. Ugh. I don't like spaghetti when it wiggles. Ha! That's not spaghetti. They're widgety grabs. Oh. oh, my goodness me. That's top tucker, mate. Mrs. Dinkum caught them specially. I mean, oh, my goodness me. Delicious. <laughs> Maisie Mac and I are honoured to eat them. We are? That evening, Maisie Mac and Daddy settled down to sleep under the stars. It had been quite a day. The next morning, Maisie Mac was up bright and early. Hello, Kyle. What are you doing? Don't you have chewing gum in Edinburgh? <coughs> well, don't flip out, Maisie Mac. It's just my snake mate, Snazza. So please to see ya. Maisie Mac had a funny feeling she'd seen a stick like this before. What's more, it seemed to have a life of its own. What on earth are you doing, Maisie Mac? Hunting for water, Daddy. Wood belong. Ah, this is where the water is. I'm sure of it. We have to dig. OK, Maisie, mate. Before long, Maisie Mac and Kyle struck water. Tickety-boo! How do you do that, Maisie mate? It's magic. Tell me the real story, Maisie Mac. How did you know about that stick? Miss Pavis told us all about it, Daddy. That afternoon, Maisie Mac and Daddy walked to the nearest town to catch the bus. Daddy, would you take a photo of me with everyone? Maisie Mac was tickled pink when she heard that the animals had decided to name the new waterhole Maisie Mac Billabong. Oh, thank you. I've always wanted a billabong named after me. Toodaloo the new. Oh.